Hi everyone, this tutorial is going to be about metrics and plugging in a metric collection as middleware for Golang services. Uh, metrics are going to be collected by Prometheus and visualized with Grafana. Uh, sound excited? So stay tuned. What we've got here is a basic HTTP server setup. We've got Mux as the router and we're registering a couple of uh, handlers for testing purposes. We've got here the lemon and potato handler which echo to us lemon and potato and essentially what we want to do is to count requests to lemon and potato and we do that via metrics and we plug in the metrics as middleware to Mux. So we uh, are constructing our middleware in here and then uh, using the use method of Mux, we have the ability to plug in uh, metrics. Essentially, it's going to be the metrics function of metrics middleware. And the way it will work is that at every request, we'll count, um, we'll increase a counter of uh, requests to a certain endpoint, and from time to time. Uh, Prometheus is going to query these metrics and add, it, uh, add the metrics to its own uh, database. So in order to do that, we have to add a specific endpoint uh, specifically for uh, Prometheus in order for Prometheus to pull uh, the metrics from uh, our service. So that endpoint is going to be declared as forward slash metrics and the handler uh, is provided to us by the um, Promethe Prometheus Golang client. Okay, so we just prom http.handler and uh, that is basically all handled for us. So let's uh, get into the middleware and see how the uh, metrics middleware is declared. Uh, so here we have the metrics middleware struct and we have to declare um, as attribute here uh, a couple of uh, instruments for collecting metrics and there are ver various uh, instruments. I recommend you to check the um, your particular sort of uh, metrics collection um, um, library and collection uh, tool the specific instruments that they uh, are supported, usually they are similar in the sense that they are either counters or uh, various uh, gauges uh, and so on. So in this case, I'm going to use a basic uh, counter called ops process processed, um, which corresponds to operations uh, processes, essentially going to be a counter of um, requests that come in into the server. So then we have the uh, constructor of the uh, metrics uh, middleware and here we sort of um, instantiate the ops processed okay, using the um, prom auto library uh, prom auto package from the uh, Golang client of Prometheus we call new counter fec and then we pass in some options. Uh, this is going to be the name of the metric when we uh, later on are going to explore and look to visualize our metrics. Uh, this is what we're going to be looking uh, for. My app here uh, I would recommend so that you're a bit more flexible so that you get the name of your application somewhere from the configuration and the name of the metric itself processed operations uh, total and some sort of help attribute which um, allows us to pass in some more description um, to this metric okay and also we can pass some labels um, to this metric so that later on we can actually filter uh, the requests when we visualize them by a specific method get post um, put delete and so on uh, the request path uh, lemon potato etc and the status code we'll be able to filter by 
um, whether it was successful or um, 404 and so on. And basically that is it and we're just returning our metrics middleware uh, instance in here. Next let's take a look at the metrics function which we will uh, actually pass in as middleware in the main.go in here. So as uh, mentioned in the previous uh, tutorial about logging, essentially this is a handler function. Uh, we got, we're getting a response writer and a request and we can do some uh, logic before the endpoint is called and after the endpoint is called and we can call the endpoint um, using the next parameter and its method serve HTTP essentially and um, the idea is that we would want to um, extract metrics and we would want to increase these uh, ops processed operation operations processed uh, counter every time that we get a request. So there are two options to do it before the um, calling the endpoint or after calling the endpoint and since I want to include the status code as well in the metric uh, I'm doing it after calling the um, endpoint so essentially the endpoint would finish executing and then I would um, increase the counter of operations processed. Essentially uh, I'm going to um, um, mention again uh, why I'm using a response writer uh, interceptor uh, is because I essentially want to get access to this status code which otherwise I would not uh, using the plain response writer and the um, HTTP request. So essentially I'm wrapping the response writer uh, object in this response writer interceptor which contains the response writer plus the status code and every time um, in some handler for example if I go to main.go and we see here in the lemon handler I set right header to 100 so every time the handler the header would be set uh, then the um, if we go back to the middleware uh, we will set the status code uh, within the response writer interceptor so that's how I will obtain the status code in the uh, response writer so that later on we can uh, set this label and able and be able to filter uh, by the status code. So the um, process of setting the labels is with the use of the uh, method with so we specify with and labels and we provide actual values for the labels which we've mentioned uh, above in here. So for the method um, we get the method from the request object and for the path we get the path again from the request as the request URI and the status code uh, we're getting it from the uh, writer interceptor and we just convert the uh, integer to the string so that all these sort of tags and labels they are standardized uh, as strings and then after that uh, we call enc to just uh, increment the counter of uh, operations processed and that's as simple as that okay and before uh, executing and seeing how everything um, uh, runs in action uh, let's take a look at some of the um, extra configuration in order to make this happen. So essentially we have configurations for Prometheus uh, itself, some global um, attributes here, scraping interval at which it'll pull uh, our application and extract the uh, metrics, scrape config, the job name you can set uh, whatever name you have um, scrape interval which I believe could ov override the global 
scrape interval just to pull more frequently specifically for our application and the target really important is going to be the um, uh, sort of host and the port at which um, our Golang application is going to run so that Prometheus can uh, pull essentially this host and this port and by default it'll um, essentially pull the forward slash metrics okay this host is because we're going to run within a docker compose setup so this is the service name within docker compose and again i'm reminding you that it's going to pull essentially the service name from docker compose port of our service and by default it's going to pull the false forward slash metrics to extract the metrics so what is happening essentially is that um, every time um, an endpoint is invoked in here um, the metrics the value of ops processed is increased and kept locally within the um, golang application and prometheus from time to time is polling the for slash metrics to extract uh, the values of these uh, instruments of these um, counters or gauges uh, and so on so let's take a look at briefly at the docker compose what's happening in here we got prometheus and we're specifying that we're overriding sort of the uh, prometheus config we're taking it from our local prometheus folder and pasting it in uh, etc for slash prometheus uh, some extra configuration in here for the prometheus run command the Pr prometheus port is going to be 9090 link to our golang service which runs on port 8080 and is built using the um, docker file under the root folder the docker file is pretty simple for this golang application and to visualize the uh, metrics we're using grafana default image grafana latest ports 3000 by default and um, it depends on the prometheus service so that being said uh, let's go and uh, start the docker compose okay let's just scroll and confirm that uh, grafana i believe started and uh, prometheus has completed uh, its startup process so once we have that we can go to um, well before we go to the browser we can check a little bit uh, manually so what we can do is uh, we can do a curl to localhost 8080 let's take a look at the metrics so essentially these are some default uh, metrics that um, the golang uh, prometheus library exposes for us some actually statistics of the go uh, runtime for now since we haven't hit the endpoint we have we don't have that um, sort of metrics for our lemon and uh, potato uh, endpoints we just have metrics for uh, the uh, uh, metrics uh, endpoint itself so uh, let's actually execute some curl requests to the uh, lemon endpoint let's do two and let's do one for the potato endpoint okay and now if we query the metrics let's look for it and we should be able to see for lemon two requests and for potato one request and we see here that we got about 11 requests for metrics a couple of two of them are ours and i believe the rest nine of them are of uh, prometheus that is continuously querying these uh, golang serv server at the rate 
uh, of 10 seconds, which is based on our uh, Prometheus config. Okay, now that we've confirmed sort of manually that we can query the metrics from our service, uh, and we see here that uh, Prometheus is doing its work. Basically, the uh, we get hits here to our for slash metrics. Let's uh, visualize everything in Grafana. So for that, let's go to localhost port 3000 and use the admin password admin to log in to Grafana. So Grafana will have to first uh, essentially set a source for our data. So to set, set a Prometheus source, we'll go to configuration, data sources, add data source, Prometheus, set HTTP Prometheus, port 9090. This is essentially the service name in Docker Compose. Again, I'm reminding, save and test, we see here uh, that with green, we've got the confirmation that the data source is working. That's what we want to see. Now we can go to um, create, I believe, or home dashboard. Let's go to create dashboard and add empty panel. In this empty panel, uh, the data source, which is the only data source that we have at the moment, Prometheus, is selected by default. And to be able to visualize our metric, we can click here on metrics. And by default, we can sort of uh, select what metrics we want to see. And we already see that um, we have here the my app processed ops total metric. Basically, um, uh, essentially Grafana is communicating at the moment with Prometheus and extracting available metrics. And this is how we found our metric. We can click on it and we can already see that um, with different colors we have the various um, labels, okay, differentiated requests on post requests on forward slash potato. Uh, with blue, with green we have get requests on forward slash lemon and with yellow we've got requests on forward slash metrics. And we can also set some update, some auto update, so that we can see that uh, second by second our data is being updated. Like so. Um, the uh, metrics have been stationary for requests on lemon and potato. We can disrupt that state and do some more requests on for slash potato and let's do one or maybe three to four slash lemon and let's see it updating okay and we see that uh, Prometheus has queried the Golang service has extracted the metrics has updated its database and now uh, in its turn Grafana has queried Prometheus for the metrics and uh, we can display and visualize the metrics uh, in Grafana. So that is basically it. Um, I hope uh, it will be useful for you and see you in the next tutorials.